welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program, and we are here today, and we are talking about Croatian wine. Uh, a lot of people, I asked a bunch of people on Ustream if they've ever had Croatian wine. They have not. The majority, almost 90%, uh, a lot of people have not had experience with Croatian wine, but what's going on in Eastern Europe is something that should not be overlooked. There are a lot of very interesting wines being uh, put out. This was sent to us by Great Baniac, so we, we appreciate it. And what's really a lot of fun is just trying all these different parts of the world. So we're gonna jump into these three Croatian wines in a minute. Uh, Croatia is very interesting. You need to understand that it's really broken up in two general areas. What's going on in the coastland and what's going on in the continental middle. And the continental middle is just devoured, <laughs> devoured is not probably the right word, just completely uh, covered in white wine varietals, a lot of cheap white wines that really aren't that exciting or uh, really high quality. Uh, Croatia as a whole is producing 50 million bottles of wine, so it's not just your you know little spots and you know different areas. I mean, Croatia has a long, long history of creating very interesting wines. Uh, the island of Hvar, H V A R, is really where some of the more interesting wines come from, including the uh, Plavic uh, Mali, which is a descendant of the Zinfandel grape. Um, so we'll get into that in a little bit. 67% um, of the wine coming out of Croatia is white wine, uh, with 1% rosé and the remainder being um, red wine. So, you know, just a very interesting area that has a lot of potential. Um, a lot of the wines are uh, close to the Italian uh, border, like our first wine, which is a Malvavesa. Uh, you know, so Malavesia, which is a, a, a grape that does a lot of good work in Italy, uh, also, uh, does some interesting stuff in Croatia. So I'm really excited about trying these three wines. I think Croatia is expanding our palate, trying different things. That is always our MO and our, our call, our battle cry. Oh, you know, kind of thing. Throw up the W's. You know, so that kind of thing. So I'm very excited about expanding my palate, expanding your palate, expanding Mott's palate, expanding everybody's palate. Talking about expanding palates, we continue in opening sports packs. Mott, this has become one of my favorite things. Now, this is a pack of basketball cards. Do you remember Skybox? Oh, classic. This is the 94 95 Skybox. Let's see what we get out of here. Uh, we get a rookie, Mr. Watson. Uh, Jamie Watson, I remember him. He, uh, he didn't do too much damage. Terry Cummings. Very solid basketball player. You remember him? Yeah. How about this? Charlie Ward, former Heisman winner, turned New York Nick. He was a lot of fun. For, for, uh, this is, what's his name? Eddie Jones. Loved Eddie Jones. Had a good career. Grant Long, big bum. Um, Carl Malone turned into a wrestler. He was a wacky guy. Wow, look at this. Nice little card from Shaquille O'Neal. This is a special card. This probably went for like 20, 30 bucks at one point because Shaq was um, the man. So this is a, a Shaq card. Put that on the side, I'm gonna make a couple bucks on the bay. Um, Samkins, Dickie Samkins, he was terrible. Wayman Tisdale, bum. Dukembe Mutombo, still playing. Uh, Brian Shaw, scrappy. And uh, Scotty Williams, hated, hated him for some reason. He was a bull, wasn't he, at one point? Yeah, he was a bull, I hate all those bulls. Anyway, a lot of fun with the basketball cards. Let's get right into the wine. Vivoda, uh, Malavasia. Uh, this is a Malavasia, uh, very close to the Italian border. It's from Istre, uh, 13 US dollars. This is a very aromatic and exciting white grape that a lot of people, I think, will be turned on to in the coming years. I remember Wild Horse from California jumped around and played with Malavasia for a little while and, and uh, kind of with some mixed results. Very golden, as you can tell, on the color. Uh, let's give it a sniffy sniff. I get really interesting like peach cobbler component bouncing through the nose, which is quite nice. Very spritzy. Um, there's a little woodiness action coming through in the nose as well. Not too bad. Uh, very, very acidic spritzy on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Nice acidity on the mid palate. But then kind of, my gosh. Hello, Casper. The friendly, friendly, friendly ghost, but this time it's evil Casper. The mean, mean wine ghost, because this wine just disappears on your palate. I was about to go into my spiel, and the wine completely disappeared on my palate. Um, 
which is very disappointing. The only thing I'm left with now is some wood in my mouth, and I'm not really that happy about having this much wood in my mouth right now. So let me give it one more shot. I get a little lemon peel on the flavor profile. I actually get a little bit like watermelon juice flavors there real quick. Right after lemon peel, water, wow, this wine does disappear. Left with a lot of acid and a lot of wood. I, I find this to be a mess of a wine. Um, $13, 13 being very unlucky in this situation. I'm gonna score this wine 70 points. Um, it's got a little kind of flavoring going on, so it's not a complete waste of time, but I just don't see a lot of people really enjoying this wine whatsoever. Um, very hot, acidic, off-balanced, too much wood, not enough fruit, not a great wine. Real tough start for Croatia. Interesting. Now, let's move on. Um, now you will find out, uh, this is Kutebo, uh, this is a gold medal award winner, um, Mikhail, um, Interesting, this is from the Grasha Vina grape, uh, which is also known as Welsh Riesling, which is a very old school Eastern European grape. This is $15, you'll see a lot of uh, Grasha Vina, uh, which is really the grape uh, that you most see planted in Croatia. Um, and so again, you're talking about a grape varietal that you might be more familiar with as Welsh Riesling. Um, 15 bones, um, let's see what's going on here. Good color. Spritzy, Mott, can you see that? Get a little bit of that spritz. But as you can see, it's already dying down, just from the freshness. But look at the bottle, still doing its thing. A lot of fun. Um, catch net, kind of neat. But then it goes away, a little of that acid, um, getting excited and doing its thing. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. I get a little cantaloupe coming through on the nose. Sugar cane. Yeah, cantaloupe and sugar cane, pretty one-dimensional again, not too exciting on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Good mouthfeel. Oh, I really like it. It's actually very pleasant on the mouth. Um, a little acidity on the back end, which is nice. Kind of like an imaginary blend of Riesling meets Sauvignon Blanc, which I like. Um, it's pretty good. Hold on one second. Mm. It does a nice job of hitting you with fresh acid right in the beginning. I could see this wine doing extremely well with oysters, clams, mussels, shellfish, people. Shellfish. Um, liking this wine. Very pleasant in the mouthfeel. Again, scoops of cantaloupe in my mouth. Always happy. Um, very melony. And you know, us dudes like melons. I mean, it's really good stuff. I mean, really, really crisp, clean, well-structured, good balance, nice harmony, not too hot, very serviceable wine. Again, doesn't have the complexities, thought-provoking, greatest novel of our generation, you know, structure, but a very well-made entry-level type white wine that at 15 US dollars suggested probably can find for 12, Definitely rivals and is more exciting than a lot of Pinot Grigio and even the New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs are starting to get pricey. This is a nice little wine. I don't dislike it at all. Let me flip it. I kind of like it. I'm going to go 88 points in this wine. I think it's very good. Uh, a, a really great little white wine and definitely the kind of wine I think you should really try if you want to try Croatian wine. And after the first wine, I was like, uh-oh, are we about to walk into another Chianti-type episode? But this wine brought some serious... I wouldn't say serious, but light thunder. You know that quick little storm that goes by? You get, get a couple, ding, ding, you know, kind of action on the side, and then it's out and it's sunny again. You know, Mott, you run in home and then you run back out because 15 minutes later you're playing wiffle ball again. That kind of thunder, but it's very adequate, very solid, goes with a lot of foods. Um, you know what I'm really actually thinking? Man, if I had a nice Greek salad, some fresh cheese, you know, feta cheese, you know, like olives, this would go really well with that. So if you're a Greek salad fan, um, Grashvina is up your alley. Go figure. I like it. Hmm. If you don't like cantaloupe, you'll have a problem with this wine because it's really rolling. It's rolling deep. And finally, the wine that I've definitely been most excited, uh, Zlatan Otok. Um, 
2004, 35 US dollars on this Plavac Mali, which is the grape um, from Croatia, uh, a descendant of Zinfandel, um, really, really interesting wines. Uh, the best wines I've ever had from Croatia have always been from this grape varietal. Uh, Plavic, like Divac, Plavic, you know, um, are really interesting wines uh, from the island of Havar, um, which is the south part of Croatia. Gets tons of sun. Really interesting wines coming from this area. Pricey, 35 bones, no joke. I mean, not that many people are gonna roll the dice and pay 35 bones on a Croatian Zinfandel. But, um, if you're exploring, expanding your palate, if you're in charge of a restaurant list and you wanna mix it up and bring a little thunder, um, I think this could be a great way to go. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Interesting, I do get Zin-like characteristics, blackberry but I also get a little bit more earthiness, a, a little leather box coming through. If you've never had a leather box, you wouldn't understand. Um, very gamey. I mean, very gamey. Almost like going to Animal Kingdom in Disney, which I just did with Lizzie. I mean, it smells, it smells like a zebra, if that makes any sense. Um, there is some dark chocolate, some black currant, blackberries, black, dark fruit coming through. No raspberries or cherries here. Strawberries, excuse me, or cherries here. Little herbaceous action coming through now on the nose, which I like quite a bit. Um, oregano kind of kind of thing going on as well. Very complex, interesting nose. Very much suiting me up for an interesting experience. I'm excited. Let's give it a whirl. Yes! You know what? It's been a long time since we really, really, really did something on the Thunder Show. We're about to do something on the Thunder Show. I am completely shocked by this wine. I mean, as you can tell. <laughs> um, hold on one second before I get too crazy. Really? Yeah. Little, little uh, heat. Yeah, little heat. Big wine. Guys, this wine is sensational. Downright, fundamentally sensational. Huge fruit. I, I might use this wine for Thanksgiving. It's that good. I had a couple things in mind. I wanted to use the Schifrin Zin, represent Bobby. But I'm going to tell you something right now. This is probably one of the better wines that I, I mean, you know what, I'm switching seats again, Ma. I'm that excited. Get me over here now. I mean, this is, this is no joke. I'm just moving out of excitement. This is no joke, probably the one, one of the more interesting new wines I've had in a long time. Not only does it have the Zinfandel fruit and structure, but it's sweet tannins, right? The, tan, the bitter part is sweet. Like gorgeous fruit nectar, just juice and jam for days. But then it gets herbaceous, it's earthy, it's structured, it has Bordeaux-like structure. The only thing I'm sad about is that they know it. That's why it's 35 bucks. They know it. But if they didn't know it, this wine, if it was 18 to $20, would be probably one of the screaming values of Wine Library TV history. I have no idea. It comes from Vinum USA. We don't carry these wines. Matt, we're going to have to find some websites to link this up, work with Matt and Ian. Um, <coughs> imported by US. Wine importers, I mean, I'm gonna put Ian on this right now. I wanna carry this wine. 14.5 alcohol, Ma tasted a little bit, I'll be honest with you, I think you got it, not that he got it mixed up, but I think you're tasting the tannins, which are bitter and sometimes hot on your palate as well. This wine is boatload fruit, boatload of action, very delicious, extremely well made. This is a killer. This is an absolute killer wine. I love it, I love it. Tobacco, stinky bomb on the finish, which is great, but still covered by so much fruit, that becomes a second tier flavor. New world, old world, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it strong. I mean, I'm going 93 plus on this wine. I think it is remarkable, it is worth seeking out. 
I will be putting four bottles in my cellar once I figure out how the heck to get it because I want to see this evolve. I want to see what happens. And no kidding, no kidding. This is the moment, right this second, that I've come to realize Croatia is on the scene. It's coming. And the next five years, tons of you, tons of you, tons of them, tons of people out there will be drinking, not tons, <laughs> but the smart ones, the people that get it, are gonna be drinking Croatian wine. I mean, it's a little pricey, but other than that, spectacular. I'd love to have this with ostrich, for example, which I just had um, in a South African restaurant in Disney this weekend. Chico, I think. It was unbelievable, great. And we had this amazing ostrich dish and I just wish I had this wine. This wine rolls, it rolls deep and it is absolutely worth seeking out. Happy birthday, Mark Spaulding, on your big third birthday. Question of the day, the best wine you've ever had from Eastern Europe. And if you've had none, say none. This is a good time to comment. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. And we really are. I mean, this Croatian wine just changed my wine world. See you next time.